Hello everyone, it's Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and my name is Zufar Bigbov, and we're here to have a good, nice, excellent, whatever you write in your comments, I'm very happy to read that um, webinar of oil painting. My oil painting webinars come usually, as you noticed, if you've been watching my channel before, in two flavors. Sometimes we have outdoor session and that cannot be exactly live because of internet connection and streaming is just problematic uh, due to whatever the technology is not there yet. So we can write from the field, have excellent video. It's not there yet. But at the same time, I do recording and then lively I can comment. Another flavor is doing a live, exactly live painting in studio. Then commenting becomes a little bit more uh, challenging. At the same time, you can see exactly what's happening. And I really do a commenting. If I have any dilemma or problem, I really explain uh, what I think about that. Sometimes I mumble, uh, but most of the time, anyway, uh, as I read uh, your reaction and also I'm trying to read the live chat room, you're happy uh, watching it because that's kind of simulate what dilemmas and problems and challenges you go through when you're outside uh, or when you are um, like in your studio and working on landscape. So that's very cool. So today we'll be doing a studio version. If you read my um, email which I sent to my subscribers and uh, if you haven't subscribed yet go to my website zufar.com and subscribe to a newsletter and for live webinars and also of course I encourage you to subscribe to my youtube channel here because it's still developing maybe it doesn't develop very fast because I'm like solopreneur the person who works in this uh, sort of business on my own uh, so far but I'm sure that uh, future is coming and more um, it doesn't get worse at least it, it can get just better or be the same I'm pretty comfortable with what I'm doing and I'm glad that your reaction is mostly positive on my um, when if you look how many dislikes I have, I think for thousands and thousands of likes I have overall through many like um, videos, I have just maybe two or three of them and mostly people not because the video is bad even though the quality is not the great, we're streaming live, uh, but uh, mostly because I don't know, it just doesn't fit uh, someone's needs. So that's great. Thank you so much for being uh, with me and what we're doing today. We're painting uh, boats at the mooring and this scenery reminds me Maine. I'm very excited to go to Maine in August, be there uh, for a week painting and then for a week with my family and I hope I will have time for painting um, that week as well. And this is Stonington, Connecticut. So uh, let's look at the composition and let's do sketch and then painting. Painting uh, I want to do uh, for less than an hour, simulating um, on-site um, painting, especially when you have at twilight. Uh, of course, even if you have a light with you, which uh, is not a problem uh, when you pick colors, at the same time, light condition at twilight. Uh, at sunset or in the morning changes dramatically so and part of your painting could be if you have a bigger one or paint longer a period of time could be like one colors of the like lighter sky and so on and then shadows on the water could be inappropriate or lighter or darker than it's supposed to be anyways uh let's do that scenery and the goal of course would be to work even faster because while we are on site we're trying to pick those colors which exactly are there we cannot get them from photograph and what we're doing today is generally trying to simulate the situation okay let's start So this is the view and I took a video of this view earlier and I showed that on my Instagram. If you want to watch it, you can go to my Instagram and you'll find me there under Nick of Zufar Fine Arts. And I think this was the most beautiful moment. I've been standing there, I had temptation to paint, but I thought I won't be able to do good session. Let's me observe, observe this maybe do sketching, mental sketching, and then present it to you. And I know since about an hour and a half driving from me, I can come back to this place and paint it again. As you see, clouds uh, are, 
arranged that way as the next day rain is coming and that's the weather which uh, was finally brought and we have uh, here as a cold and and, and a rainy anyways uh, let's see what can we do with this uh, scenery because uh, when I have my sketchbook and I think when we deal with a composition we need to think uh, a sketch a sketchbook so uh, what would be our help here is um, first we need to decide do we want to have it vertical or a horizontal format and I see here that uh, for a small study this will be a little too much uh, to do both um, uh, I mean the horizontal wide with boats on the right side on the left side so I was thinking mainly shall I pick this part uh, which has a uh, this path and maybe almost like a vertical line um, or but some boats as well or to take uh, as another option uh, this view uh, this view could be more appealing and it looks more vertical again coming uh, back to uh, choice of the format vertical goes faster and here we have a very uh, pretty limited time and uh, so my choice is going let me sketch this way if it's my choice number one doesn't work well then we can uh, do uh, an, another choice so for you not to be distracted by um, by my sketchbook I'll put it this way so what I see here is uh, as usually I just sketch without any borders but uh, giving intentionally more space around so uh, what's attractive here is just uh, definitely this uh, boat in the center and uh, and I do not know exactly how high I want my uh, line of horizon have another boat here because grouping is always great a third boat they're all at the mooring and I'm not trying to be very good with uh, shapes here. I'm just trying to understand how things will work uh, generally for me. Like, like bigger shapes would be helpful. So line of horizon high enough. I mean above the boats. At least above some of the boats. And some antennas and that gear which help them to catch and, and or drag net so and also I get used to the view once I grab my uh, brush that will be much more challenging Doing this session in my studio live, uh, not just commenting but painting, it really uh, doesn't help me oh well uh, follow what you write there as a question. So I'll need to do some stops. And then give you uh, feedback and answers. I think that's very important, especially if you're tried had all um, efforts to be here live so it's really uh, kind of a lot of uh, a lot of details here and when I squint looking at my drawing or even looking at that um, photograph I can see things better I see that we have here kind of like one boat's side another boat's side and they and with reflection then it, everything seems to be kind of getting more simplified one of the biggest challenges I heard repeated so often when I paint outdoors making choice what to paint and what not to paint simplification is a biggest challenge 
you know sometimes it just have to go even amorphous because overall the shape of objects will be like this I like those red uh, floaters and I think on the side of the of those uh, fishing boats also some like red and black lines and also there was some light here which gets reflected another light like I think the in upper parts of the boat which also gets reflected and I think it's a reflection of it here has a more contrast because uh, then against the sky because water absorbs skylight but um, that light on, on, on top of the boat is bright enough so the contrast stays great what else do I think uh, here is important so this part of the boat which I see do I want to include that or not because when if I want to include that it looks like it helps me at the same time I have to chop a lot of it Let's look at the uh, main scene again. And uh, let's remove this image. Yes, um, I think for wider, especially for horizontal format of bigger painting, a longer uh, painting process, that could be great, but not for our vertical uh, tryout. At the same time, we could be not, we don't have to be uh, so meticulous with our composition because that's just a field study. At the same time, if we do field study, we do we try how things will work. If it doesn't work well, um, so at least drawing should show us, uh, at least we need to, on, on paper, we need to uh, solve this dilemma. Uh, when we do work on canvas with colors, on smaller canvas, we're generally trying to see what colors and values are over there. So let's get back uh, to my scenery and let's have again the view. Yeah, I think, I think uh, just because it's study, I will include part of this boat. Why not? Especially I like uh, because some of those uh, catchers for for lobsters they're kind of on yellowish side and color wise it looks pretty neat so then I try to see where my borders will be since I have here extra space that's actually a big deal because I one borders of my canvas which is going to be like this oh you see the size of the sketch and the size of the uh, canvas are pretty much the same yes okay so I think I made decision overall I see these bigger shapes of this uh, light boat dark boat with all those lights around a uh, little slashed space with this one but it's recognizable as a boat and um, of course I'm not going to do uh, this little detail of some boat which is like 95% outside of my view and I want to signify that, that at the bottom the water is darker so and before I proceed with painting I want to read all your comments <coughs> which you usually excuse me uh, which uh, usually helps me and helps you uh, because we communicate and let me find my session okay I have uh, yes from Yamini hi Zufar Steve uh, yes hi Zufar and Joan Lynn Polly Oh, Lynn Polly, I'm so glad that you are here. Uh, Lynn Polly is an excellent artist, fine artist. Uh, I know from Easton and she lives in that area. I'm so glad that you're here. And also uh, Richard uh, is greeting me too. 
looking forward to today's painting cheers from australia wow that's great so i'm so glad that you're all here and um, i will i will now continue with the painting process and uh, as many of you liked my smaller um like box which was I updated and upgraded and it became from paint box as inclusion for uh, water watercolor uh, easel it became on itself as a pochade box and I've been using there a smaller palette palette of pretty much of this size which is 5 by 11 I would say and um, and maybe I'll be able to make a video to uh, show you how I work I mean uh, difference between two um like naive box which without any changes i still keep one of that and also my upgraded one and i'll tell you how much did it cost for me time wise and money wise but i want to use today a palette which i use the smaller version of it uh, which i use uh, um, on my outside painting on uh, studies of this size so and my palette is is like this today and uh of course it's not neat i did i did not want to really exactly prepare it well but it has all paints ready and if you want me to tell you what colors i'm using i added some extra blues and so you can really not look at these ones um, because that's extra because my essentials color colors uh which i would use and use before are here which is alizarin crimson cadmium red uh, light cadmium orange cadmium uh, yellow medium cadmium lemon yellow ochre yellow light uh sienna, raw sienna this is olive green this is one of the cooler uh, mixes of um, of paint i think i mentioned that from russia it could be mixed it's not really original pigment and this is my cerulean uh, blue then it's cobalt blue ultramarine blue of course uh, i have here white titanium white on both sides i like to have two piles recently because once i work with one and it gets contaminated somehow because of the process you never i uh, really plan it i still have another one which is available and spot around it is not really much used of course not much space available for mixing colors um, but we'll do our best what else this is king's blue which is basically a mix of the titanium or zinc white with cobalt blue i like it for sky especially in twilights so instead of mixing uh especially when i have like very short time i have color which i know exactly of the grade it's i think it's a mid-tone uh, value wise maybe like five or six and uh, ready to use and uh, this is also I think yeah this is blue it's a hue for uh cerulean and i was really looking what exactly pigment is used there i think they use the phthalo phthalo small small amount because you know phthalo is crazy pigment and uh, you took it too much and then it starts shining and getting dark and intense so this is moderately well uh, mixed with uh, zinc or titanium white uh, this is one of the paints which I think I'm not going to use it just happened to be on my palette and uh, that's something like a golden dark ochre or, oh no this is actually golden uh, Mars something like that and purple so I'm not going to use much of this line of my uh, pigments mainly working with these ones and this is one of the uh, reds which is close to uh, a cadmium red light and uh, it's one of the uh, weaker and cheaper pigments i just decided uh, will it work well especially when we mix with white the cadmiums they behave differently and uh, i say this cadmium uh, red turns to be cooler i just was wondering will this uh, stay cool or not i've been using this color in fact when it would, we've been painting peonies uh, last week so let me arrange my space here of course a couple of brushes not too many i'm going to use i'm taking my sketch away but i will keep it in front of me so i would be able to really uh, see what was our gain 
yeah, I think you can see this well enough. Every time we have different experience, okay, because we experience uh, experimenting, and that's great. In my uh, five by seven, and of course, uh, you've seen in, in in your emails that my five by seven uh, series of paintings uh, for special for Father's Day, I um, I post it as a collection and a few of these paintings been uh, purchased and I had questions about the other ones. If you are interested, uh, until Father's Day, I'm uh, really handling uh, shipping uh, for you. It's Thursday uh, since our post works mainly during the business days. It won't come before Father's Day, but collection uh, title will stay the same. So if you want to save on shipping and insurance, I'm paying for it. So uh, please go to my website, zufar.com, and you'll find there uh, under, under the tab of paintings, uh, special Father's Day collection. So, but let's work on today's uh, project. So I've been painting outside, so it's a little, feels a little weird uh, painting in studio uh, in front of you. And of course, when I paint my uh, palette, usually like, horizontal in front of me here I have it back uh, vertical as I've been we've been doing that uh, during winter uh, hours and uh, in I think in March as well so uh, sketches here if I since I'm in studio maybe I'll use my uh, oil pastel just to show where's my line of horizon and then also as you remember before, um, I've been treating, uh, if it's not oil primed uh, canvas or canvas uh, panel, I've been kind of, kind of with a force, I've been really uh, kind of um, polishing it with a paper towel. That was helpful. But today I have a paper, I mean, I have a, my canvas panel, which it's already pre-treated uh, with some uh, medium on top of it. So what else? Position of this central boat here is, is, is important. And of course, reflection, direction of reflection line is important too. Again, uh, even though composition, we always think how it works, how is, is it good or not, but, but when you paint, do a quick study. If you spend too much time, like as we have a luxury of time in studio, then you miss the moment. And all these constructions on top of it. So this should be good enough because it's a bigger division of uh, of shapes. I mean, of the space of the canvas. So with the bigger shapes, and that should be good. So I will start in the beginning of working, or with a thinner one a brush, just to show some like um, in the darker areas. Or we'll start with the wider one. So it's always a choice and preference, whatever you're more comfortable with. I like uh, brushes like flat brushes uh, because many of them have a uh, pretty uh, sharp edges so you can do thinner lines and thicker lines so that would work well and again um, so Mary uh, Mary Amaral is writing that she's from North Stonington right now that's great so you're a lucky one you can go tomorrow at the sunset and go and paint that and also Joyce uh, is joining us from North Carolina, Joyce Copley, uh, quite um, significant uh, last name because of course Copley Plaza in Boston is uh, named after a uh, British American artist uh, with the last name Copley. So what I would start with, again, of course, photograph is photograph. I will uh, do some 
dark mix or sometimes they call it impressionistic uh, black will mix uh, dark transparent paints as uh, in our case here of course ultramarine blue and alizarin plus I will add olive green I don't have a uh, browns with me today and uh, my mix is more in greenish more on greenish side a warmer side and what I do here now is pretty much graphical work we'll try to add more coloristic quality to it as soon as we um, kind of we'll have a we'll figure out which um, areas I mean I think at least one will have darker areas covered because anyway on screen uh, of uh, my tablet or my phone I cannot see uh, colors so Shirley Hamilton from Cape Ann area Shirley uh, that's great uh, thank you and uh, welcome uh, thank you for joining and um, you know when we paint in studio and we have just photograph quite often we work a lot from memory trying to recall those colors especially in shadows when you're out there you see colors and shadows well enough because they're not so dark and deep as on photograph when we work in studio we tend to make them like more black less color diverse if we try to do diversification of color that's mainly kind of from our head and the values car uh, values uh, balance is different as well but uh, let me start with a simple simpler uh, bigger area I think if I'll start from the sh dark area on water I'll be able to proceed and covering at the same time pretty good amount of uh, canvas uh, surface of course as I see on photograph it's uh, of course it's blue but uh, not so intense blue kind of desaturated blue of course any brown would work well for, to uh, dis desaturate blue let me try in this case uh, some of my king blue so doing pretty much block in if possible the values will need to be corrected because it's almost impossible starting on white canvas get the right values I know a few artists who do, do the, that great right from the beginning and those artists have a nickname of Polaroid <laughs> but that quality uh, is seen quite rarely of course sky would be another area which is wide and could be easily corrected later on yeah the the hue hue uh, color for cerulean is definitely based on It's based on um, phthalo, phthalo blue. You see, a uh, sky is definitely here. It's lighter than water. 
because water reflects sky and sky is shining but the water absorbs part of that light uh, of course closer to closer to uh, horizon it's, it seems it tends to be in our case kind of like more on pink side yeah, I think I got this pink pretty good but I would say what I have above the, like an upper part of sky value wise it do not doesn't co coordinate well it's not well balanced so it should go darker Anyway, I have to pick here just very approximate colors. I don't need to be a crazy, uh, like getting stuck. So when we do like block in area, let's say. So now is a tricky part. So this part of the boat, this part of the boat, and this part of the, I mean, of this like light boat. We need to be sure that generally value and colors of water and sky are correct because we're going to compare this close by value um, areas with the with with water and sky if it's wrong and we'll do correct a lot on our water value then we'll need to kind of correct everything else so let's squint and look uh, like better at our like resource and um, try not to uh, see that kind of boat area yeah, instead of those is like except of those clouds which may hinder and say like, oh, you know what? I cannot really paint because of those clouds. They are dark. They take a lot of space. Maybe we can, can show them like this. And of course, those more distant clouds, they're kind of cleaner. They're kind of more on the blue side. Yes, I think uh, generally, I think value of water here is good enough. Maybe color wise, it's a little dirty, not uh, good, but value wise, it's good. I think blue here. Again, blue colors on camera, by camera lens, they're kind of tricky. They do not look the way as they are. Okay, I think I'm ready now to work on sides of boats and on the upper play, like planes of boat on the right. Yes, it's obviously darker. 
You know, when you mix, let's say, cobalt blue with orange, you get pretty nice mix. good enough it must be darker in here looks for me even like a pink color maybe So when you're outside, you just have to paint much faster. But we're we're in studio. We're talking. I'm getting a little distracted by just the situation. When I'm outside, I can be like more focused. At the same time, I have a move and drive here because of you, which is excellent. Uh, on another side let me see uh, so uh, while we yes I look at the screen and it looks um, the value wise uh, close enough let me see uh, do you have any questions down there or not so surely Barbara so what color would you have toned the canvas it's a good question I would try to uh, tone my canvas to color which is complementary not com yes i think complementary to a blue in water and somehow when if i take a color of blue kind of um, like looser i would be able to uh, get that mix of the toned canvas and um, and paint on top of it yes i think the pre-toned canvas would be a great option here or uh, maybe color of the sky in this area would be nice it's warm and pinkish so in this area when we apply blue in between brush stroke that would look great yes and uh, today i'm working not on pre-toned canvas even though i prefer usually and i have a bunch of different pre-toned canvas in my car when i go and paint outside i just choose which one i wanted to have it like more on gray like a very desaturated color or maybe on some very warm uh, pa like palette okay let's uh, so let's keep going thank you uh, Shirley for your question I think uh, you asked question which uh, many people uh, likely had in their head or uh, at least maybe not right now but would think about it uh, later on. I think because of weather, it's uh, today is a kind of like very hard to focus, especially afternoon feel sleepy and when I talk and comment I think when I just do recording and do commenting uh, during the webinar things go uh, maybe a little smoother for you and uh, maybe more entertaining because I have even like no <laughs> chance much to joke uh, if you like my jokes so no jokes today uh,
if you don't maybe you're happy then <laughs> you don't like those um, yeah when i work with dark i generally try to i guess what color is that i mean like what colors i have to mix to get that color <coughs> excuse me painting on site really is much more helpful it's much easier to see what color needs to be uh, taken as you see I really avoid going through many details here for me it's more important that the bigger planes of color are correct so those those trees in the background, I would say they here on photograph look kind of brownish, grayish, which is almost impossible. So it's over water, there's always haze, and uh, they look brownish because of the camera made a choice to move color temperature that way. When we observe it again directly, our temperature is much wider. It's we do, I mean, our eyes do not much tune up as a camera does, and it doesn't have to because the dynamic and the color dynamic range is much wider by a human eye than by camera. So I will add a little bit of blue and gray to that area. And now I would say here, because of reflecting like all this almost kind of greenish uh, part of the sky water is lighter and greener maybe even like go with it with a green add some white and uh, value wise not enough light I think all that prettiness come when we start working with a smaller brush like smaller size brush and maybe time comes close to that uh, because for our study how long we work on it maybe half an hour I'll take maybe not very small but something like like this this is not absolutely a new brush but it's round yes it's uh, by Utrecht and it's synthetic should work well in this situation so now I can really uh, work maybe I will go from top to the bottom because a sky is relatively easy part of the uh, of painting so maybe I will work on these clouds first let's say uh, when I'm outside and I do my field study like at stopping at this especially on twi uh, doing the sunset stopping at this stage would be absolutely appropriate as long as I've been as I've been very uh, careful picking right colors and values which are t changing every five ten minutes uh, if we do a sunset maybe like every minute um, it's, it's different but I would say every five minutes definitely situation change every ten minutes it changes so uh, significant you really start then trying to recall what it was what uh, when you just been uh, starting painting I mean that part of this part of the painting so with sky I think we're doing good and uh, I 
my sky should have a little more of green before it turns to be like more pink. Maybe that's the area where I need to pick a little bit of this phthalo tiny very carefully tiny amount By the way, um, if you are around and you live in, in Connecticut and you're big, um, and you'd be interested in shows, show in, and you come to show opening. So this uh, next week, Saturday, June twenty second, there will be opening of Waterworks paintings in in Lime Art. Um, Association, which is well known across the country, and um, in Hudson Valley Art Association, I have paintings in both of those shows. Uh, for a few years, I stopped submitting uh, works down there because of how it didn't work well uh, for my schedule. But this year, it worked well. I submitted works, and uh, there will be a award ceremony, and uh, I won uh, first place for waterworks and let's see maybe something with Hudson Valley too maybe not but uh, they just I mean the um, Lime Art Station called uh, today and told me that would be nice if I can come uh, for reception so I'll be there yeah our Lime Art Station is known well for Art Colony So now we can uh, take our paints much braver, I would say, thicker. So we do that not to make it just textured, just because of the uh, thicker paint can give you better uh, feeling of color. When it's too thin, it's turns to be transparent and over time it will become even thinner because the oil oxidize of course when we varnish we protect it uh, from contact with oxygen and uh, I would say degradation of paints but anyway uh, that happens even varnish degrades Okay, maybe not perfect shape uh, for clouds, but uh, I think that's good enough. And if any big itch and desire to change it, it's always possible uh, while it's wet, come back and rework it. So now, I don't know even what colors to take. 
because I don't see uh, very well what colors we have there in shadows. I would assume there is a variety of colors. One of the biggest mistakes just to take one color and do everything with it. That's uh, a mistake. Color is always present in variety, in darker areas, in gray areas, even in areas where the color is obvious. Let's say you have tangerine, which is orange color. But when you see on one side, it's like more reddish, another is like more pinkish because of the light angle and a reaction. The optic uh, quality of skin, it's a little transparency and a little this and a little that uh, effect. Like the color in, uh, in, in that case would be like the orange would be not exactly orange everywhere could be a little cooler orange color on one side Remember we did the mooring in Stonington, uh, I think last year, and I did two sessions for that. So today, I mean, in this year specifically, I focus on something which could help you to kind of have your own portfolio, not that portfolio which is supposed to show uh, to other when you get hired and so on, uh, but that portfolio which you create just to get experience. I think I'm uh, losing here a lot of time now uh, working on something which is not significant. And that wasn't my uh, intention. My intention is to show how to work outside and uh, gain that experience, which is invaluable. So what we I do here, it's, it's not exactly a mimicking of that process, which I want to show you. But again, just uh, by simplification, so we're going through some rules Let's say the water reflection is always darker than the object it reflects. I like uh, actually olive green. It really helps me a lot in many situations when I mix many different colors. Plus, I uh, need the water, and in water reflection, it's really quite often seen. I usually fix my uh, canvas with a, with a tape, so not to have any vibration as we have today. But at the same time, I wish to show you sketch parts. So I decided if I move my sketch pad like in front of camera, you won't be able. Won't be able yes, so I had to really put this uh, canvas pad. like after the drawing part. Of course, going through color variation. Of course, when we add blue, we try to mix it with other colors around at the same time, not, you know, have to not to over mix uh, paints. 
so it won't it will lose its uh, optic quality same time under mixing it uh, having it too crazily bright can at times be showing um, that the artist is a major doesn't see that that color is not as bright as on, on his or her painting in, at, under that light condition happens here in fact so you see that here a little bit of pink is because of there is a light right on the right side and uh, this deck of this boat is already catching that color that light actually not color so kind of under cross light from the sky and from the uh, Not street light, but I would say mooring light. I liked here is that kind of a yellowish tops of the catchers for lobsters. I think it's pretty cool uh, combination of colors here. And I think this reflection extends much lower. What we see on photograph, I think there is a little detail of the boat hiding it a little thinner lines can make it look more attractive especially if you're ready you're getting your painting ready to be sold what you paint it could be more understandable uh, to regular people who are not painters who have not been there with you if you, if you put some like um, some effects over there that some like uh, antennas on the boat I think it's almost eight o'clock or it's already eight o'clock so we're working here for I mean all together with sketch for a little, almost one hour I want really uh, to finish the, our simulation of plein air painting block in just will do uh, something which I really liked when I've been there is a um, reflection in water of those lights and some uh, antennas like of those uh, distant boats you know now paint gets kind of thicker and it feels almost like clay I'm kind of like do sculpting sculpting job that's really uh, also a very cool and enjoyable thing of course yeah if you're down out there and you work on this painting and you don't want to come back to this uh, like revisit this painting so you would do as much as possible 
can be done. But if you would have a chance to go and to work on this painting again, probably work on this antennas after over dry or a little drier than it's now canvas could give you better uh, quality of lines but less of that excitement which you have being down there unless you're tired and there is really no excitement of painting you just think like when it will be done you can put it aside and go and have my dinner I think if I had premixed that uh, dark right in the beginning, my work could be more efficient. It's that uh, mix of olive green with alizarin. So I'm kind of working with a lot of colors which are almost like indefinite again because of photograph okay let's do with that light so um, those lights are Take it like on orange side, a little bit of cadmium, a lemon. I'm so focused on what I'm doing I really stopped talking okay now let's create You see how much brighter these lights against darker area as water is? And then it's very hard to get a shining red. So I have here a little nice red light. And its reflection will, it's almost impossible to make shining. You see, it's darker. And the camera actually couldn't do that well, but I see that quality, which is almost impossible to show. Because our uh, red, which we have, is not shining, it's only possibility to show that maybe to go with pink maybe and there was also some green and that bright shiny green actually can be done with 
anything with a tallow and and with a cadmium or lemon or maybe that will be I can't be able to do so so I like this view again let's look how it was initially of course by the time we finish this painting this would look absolutely dark dark uh, sky so our goal would be to work fast okay and also what I was really uh, about to tell you uh, that again having portable gear having your favorite format when you exactly know how to organize space is very helpful so that contributes to spending less time on struggling readjusting to format or something which you don't have to but rather uh, picking and getting focused on what you're painting uh, and before I switch uh, my camera i would like to uh, check do you have any questions down there so <laughs> so yamini wrote the size brush you're using right now you know the round sizes could be different i think this is number two but sometimes it could be number four of that or number one that's really not helpful but for utrecht especially for that green uh black with a green uh, label on it so that's size two and um, and John yeah, from Connecticut for Gianni so <laughs> sense of humor you know when I paint I really do not not always kind of like cannot express myself in English in Russian that would be not easy but in English it's harder and I know that so far we'll be teaching Maryland in November it says Vlad yes I mentioned that in the beginning again we'd like to repeat November 9th and 10th in Chesapeake Fine Arts Studio I'll put a link under this video you can visit if you would like to study with me I'll be teaching plein air and studio work together in that excellent studio on Kent Island which is not far from Baltimore very close Annapolis and uh, Washington area yes and uh, Lynn Polly saying great demo shows the importance of planning uh, your painting so thank you and uh, so let's switch the camera so we're done with today's session i'm pretty happy with the results again emphasis on painting outdoor trying to work on quick uh, sketches don't be discouraged if you take bigger canvas cannot complete it doesn't look nice work on smaller canvases try to work instead live uh, maybe under special uh, weather situations like sunset or sunrise which may be more inspiring for you than noon uh, scenery and so on another point of course at uh, the water summertime or maybe springtime is good when everything is green like especially in may maybe uh, at winter it could be pretty chilly uh, at least in northern states in summer it's beautiful in fall it's great if, especially if you have in the background some beautiful trees and so on but boats boats in this area is just like a eternal uh, inspiration for artists that is why people paint in Maine so much because of these boats so I'm glad that you have been with me today either you're watching it live or uh, recorded just want to remind you that I have two workshops coming and one of them will be November uh, 9th and 10th in Chesapeake Fine Arts Studio uh, if I remember I put the link uh, below um, so you could click and do registration and another is an arts escape yeah, that will be in September mid of September I believe uh, September 15th and 16 or 14 and 15 so um, you'll be able to check with them as well and sign up if you are interested especially if you're coming from another state from other area have to drive and stay in area around so um, I'm glad that we've been here together again uh, I do not know exactly what I'm going to broadcast next week but I definitely will uh, fix something interesting for you will it be painting from outside or from my studio 
Either way, I'm glad to read your uh, comments. They're always positive and that's great. Thank you. We'll see you next week.